Hello again, everyone, and welcome inside another edition of the Adam Jones Podcast presented by the Baltimore Banner. I'm Jerry Coleman. I think he's the five-time MLB All-Star Adam Jones. We'll find out in just a moment because today in episode number 63, we're going to be joined by the former major leaguer Xavier Scruggs, who played for the Cardinals and Marlins in the MLB and went on also to play in the Korean Baseball Organization, as they call it. And Xavier is going to talk with us all about baseball in Korea, where Adam is right now. Or maybe it isn't, Adam. We're going to find out as the baseball season is finally underway. <laughs> Adam's also going to recap his journey to Korea in our Baltimore and Beyond segment, now brought to you by our friends right over there at Relief, Baltimore's top medical marijuana dispensary. And the Ravens adding big Derrick Henry. That'll be the focus of our For the Birds segment presented by the Maryland Lottery. In addition, we have a Lido's $50 gift card to give away in our socially speaking segment. And uh, again, that's where you answer one of Adam's posts at, at Adam Jones Pod on Twitter, also known as X now, Facebook and Instagram. But as always, let's begin with our featured guests sponsored by Jimmy's Famous Seafood straight out of Korea. It's Xavier Scruggs, and thanks for being here. Many, many miles away, but not far from where I think Adam is. Uh, let me let me start before we find out who who the man behind the mask is, Xavier. Um, during the 2016 offseason, you decided to take your talents overseas to the Korean Baseball Organization. What was that transition like for you, leaving Major League Baseball and going to another country to play? Because Adam has experience doing that. You've done it twice, two different countries, because you went also to play in Mexico, but Adam went to Japan. So tell us about that experience and where it's led you to today with the series about underway here as we're speaking between the Dodgers and Padres. Yeah, first, I appreciate you guys for having me. Um, but yeah, that transition is is not easy, right? Especially as a player that feels like they still have a lot to offer the major leagues. I felt like, man, I'm, I'm a major leaguer. I shouldn't have to go to Korea to prove the type of player that I am. But at the same time, it was an opportunity to experience something different um, and the cultural experience, the ability to go out there and kind of change my perspective on um, on different backgrounds, but also go out there and have fun playing baseball, the game that I love and, and being a part of a team that that I feel like had one goal, and that was to to win a championship. Before my goals were kind of different as to okay, I got to get up to the big leagues, or I got to stop from going back down to Triple A. On the other hand, I was still kind of battling that ego aspect of feeling like I should I belong at the major league level. Um, but that transition ultimately ended up shaping up who I who I am as a person, and ultimately who I was as a player too. You know, I'm gonna introduce myself. I am. Oh man! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Artist formerly known. Get the man awesome. a towel. Oh man! Hey, you know all about you in Korea, baby. You got to have all the skincare <laughs> products. You got to do everything. I mean, it's known for its skincare products. Yeah, um, you're getting a facial. I have a lot of things. I look good. Come on, yeah. man. It's soft, you know, it's baby soft. But I wanted to talk about a lot of different things. But you harped on it, and you mentioned it just now. Was about the transition, and you know, saying I'm a major leaguer. I'm this. That was my hardest part too. I go to, to mm -hmm. Japan and I'm like, or before that, I'm like, come on, you know, I know I'm a major leaguer, but what, 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 what was the thing that made you just be like, you know what, I'm about to go experience the hell out of this. I'm gonna take advantage of this a unique opportunity to go see a unique country. Well, obviously, we know the food and healthcare and everything else is good here, right? Um, but what was the this the factor just said, you know what, all right, this is the challenge I'm gonna take. <laughs> well, well, first off, um, I mean, I love how you're highlighting the Korean skincare while you're over here in Korea. That was uh, showing people that the mass is kind of just a normal aspect of life over here. But mm -hmm. I, I think it, it it was it was a process, Josie. I think it was kind of just this idea of like, OK, I, I need to just dive in because I can't worry about the past. I got to worry about the future at this point. I got to worry about today. I got to worry about the moment. Um, and if I'm so much worried about where I sh feel like I should be, I'm not going to truly uh, embrace the experience that I have. So uh, just being able to put myself at two feet where I'm at, but then also understand that I was doing it with my wife. I had just gotten married like a month prior to me going out to Korea. So 
we, I got to experience it also with my wife, and I didn't want to take that experience away from her, me being so worried about myself and kind of being selfish about the aspect of me being in the major leagues. I was like, okay, no, this is about us together growing, experiencing this together, and then having fun on the baseball field. Not many people ever mention their better half and the experience they have. I mean, here we talk about it. My wife, she's a travel company. You see, we everywhere in the damn globe. And that was because of Japan. Open the doors, open the, mm. the mindset. How was your wife's experience there? Because, I mean, I don't know if you had kids yet. Did you have kids when you no, came over? No, no, no. Oh, so she got to live here, you know, kid free? Oh, my wife had two kids <laughs> in Japan. So how was her experience? Because we never get to talk about the wives. Yeah, man. I, and I think, and I appreciate you asking about that because I think that's, that's one thing that shapes our experience, right? If they don't have a good experience, it's going to be hard for us because we're always going to be worried about them. But I think her experience allowed it to ease my experience. She had an amazing experience. She loved Korean culture. Um, she told herself that she was going to dive into the Korean ways, coming to the games and, and being a part of the, the um, kind of just being a part of the team. And I think that was, to me, uh, what allowed us to have a lot of success when you talk about growth and, and being there in Korea. And uh, she ended up giving birth her second year there. Oh, that's amazing. So, wow. all right, talk about that. But then fast forward, unfortunately, COVID 2020. I'm in Japan. I'm the first three weeks there. I'm like, hey, this is lit. I'm enjoying it. This country is cool. <laughs> Obviously, there was a, a king's welcome. Um, and then COVID hit. Obviously, mm. shut down every single thing, facet, Major League Baseball, Korean baseball, or just the whole world. You became a focal point in during COVID on ESPN, working with ESPN and Major League Baseball. Because you had the experience, you and Daniel Kim talked all the time. I'm up at, uh, and I get to watch the games at seven o'clock on a normal time being in Japan. How <laughs> did that come, ab come about? Like ESPN approach you and we approach you and say, hey, look, it, you have the experience over there. We would love for you to do these games. And then obviously you're transitioning to the media. When did you yeah. know you wanted to do that? Man, I, I, that was the thing is I didn't know I wanted to do it. 2020 came and um espn started inviting players and it was kind of one of those things where i was like man i would love to talk about my experiences i think that people could learn from hearing about my perspective um so i forget i ended up getting in contact with one of the producers via my agent at the time and they were like yeah we would love to have you on for a little 10 minute spot and i, I jumped on it was an opportunity of a lifetime espn and, and me connected um and was I was able to talk about 10, 15 minutes of my experiences, kind of story time uh, of what I went through playing in the KBO. Uh, I think after the fourth time I did it, I, uh, I asked the producers, I was like, hey, is there an opportunity for me to get into the broadcast side of this or, or how do I get involved with that? And um, they ultimately gave me a full Korean game to broadcast just because I was so familiar with a lot of the players um, having recently just played there. Uh, and it was you something that after I names, did it, what you mean? I do how to, do I do how to pronounce some of them. I do how to pronounce some of them. But no, once I did it, you know, you, you I felt comfortable and I was like, I, I want to pursue this. This is what I want to do more of. 2020 I actually ruptured my Achilles. So I, I kind of had this idea that maybe my career was going to be ultimately done just because I knew it was going to be a year at the, at the very least. And after knowing that I was doing decent at broadcasting, okay, now I want to I want to take this lane seriously, and that's exactly where I wanted to go and try to grasp every opportunity um, I could. And ESPN gave me some more. Now the showcasing we see in the KBO, and we got to see that front and center with you a big part of it during the pandemic. I mean, we were all baseball starved, and you were the mm -hmm. solution. But tell us about the different style of play with the flashy high powered offense the bat flips uh, crazy first pitches dance squads etc how does that yeah. play when you're making the transition from the major leagues <laughs> i think joe's could definitely uh <laughs> testament to what goes on in asian baseball but it's just a different passion it's just a different love for the game that I think what you mentioned kind of about the fans is the thing that sticks out to me as far as there's dancing in the stands. There's a lot of cheering. Everybody knows the songs to each person coming up to bat. 
Um, it just it, nobody's on their phones and like texting. It's like everybody's locked into the game, and I think that's the one thing that uh, immediately uh, that I was that that reaction was okay. This is where I want to be because this is the type of baseball and and type of fandom I want to see and be a part of. So that was one thing, and then also just. You know, their style of baseball is so regiment. It is like everything is so team focused. Everybody's doing the drills that are that are asked upon them. Um, there's not really individualized programs. It doesn't matter what type of player you are. You're going to be doing the same drills as say you're six, six, 270. You're going to be doing the same drills as a five, nine player. Um, and, and it's going to be a lot of them. And, and that's one thing that they do is a lot of drills. Um and it's more of a, a small baller mentality. Uh, they will do more of the pinch hit, the more of the hit and run. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the the hit and run. They'll do more of the uh, the steals, the bunting, all that stuff. So uh, there's just, it's just a different type of baseball. But at the same time, uh, I felt very comfortable just because I was able to go out and be myself. We have more to come here from Korea and Sarasota on the Adam Jones podcast with our special guest, Xavier Scruggs. But first, go out and support these loyal, dedicated sponsors of the Adam Jones Podcast. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by our friends at the Weinman Company. Your fun awaits at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Feed the whole crew with something for everyone, from cheesesteaks to crab cake sandwiches. Plus, ask how you can get a $15 dining credit. Get in on the gaming action with the hottest slots and your favorite table games, like blackjack, roulette, and poker. Free live shows every Friday and Saturday. Come experience nonstop fun and excitement only at Hollywood Casino Perryville. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by Jimmy's Famous Seafood, Charm City's favorite crab cake destination. Local sports fan? Experience the ultimate pregame party at the tailgate. Cheer on the Ravens with iconic live performances, an open bar, and mouth-watering eats. Can't make it? No worries. Bring the same food that caught the attention of the Food Network right to your doorstep. Shipping East Coast recipes nationwide. Jimmy's Famous Seafood is the official sponsor of the guests appearing on the Adam Jones Podcast. Maryland Lottery. Because fun looks good on you. Right now, play our exciting new multiplier scratch offs for a chance to win up to $2 million. If you received ERC funds, listen closely. The IRS has 10 years to audit your claim, but you only have until March 22nd to get taxpayer relief, and the clock is ticking. If you're losing sleep over a possible audit, we'll review your claim. If you made a filing error, we'll set things right. If you're being audited, we'll provide expert representation. The IRS Voluntary Disclosure Program ends March 22nd. You deserve peace of mind. Visit SaveMyERC.com to schedule a consultation today. That's SaveMyERC.com. Effective solution. Solutions, your one-stop shop for commercial contracting. Everything from excavation and site development to emergency remediation and restoration. Effective Solutions specializes in many forms of commercial and mixed-use construction. With a dedicated staff and a commitment to quality, Effective Solutions delivers every time. There are a lot of ways to make whiskey, but there's only one way to make Jack Daniels. At Jack Daniels, they charcoal mellow every drop, only using water from Cave Spring Hollow in Tennessee. When you make your own label, you make everything else yours too. But we don't need to tell you that, do we? Make it count. Jack Daniels. Please drink responsibly. Tennessee whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniel Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks. 2022 Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. Everyone knows Greenmount Station in Hampstead, but did you know that at Greenmount Station, you can bet seven days a week just like you're at the track? With in-person Teller windows and state of the art touchscreen kiosks. And with Greenmount Station's brand new Bet Park Sports Book, you can bet on all other sports as well, wherever you are in Maryland. Spreads, money lines, live bets, props, parlays, and teasers. The Bet Park's Maryland mobile app is now live for Apple and Android devices, so you'll never miss your next big score. Just search for Bet Park's MD in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for a limited time, 21 and over Adam Jones podcast listeners can get a $75 gift card to Greenmount Station simply for opening a new account with. Promo code GMS and a minimum $50 initial deposit. $75 gift card for new users in Maryland only. 21 and over only. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. The Adam Jones Podcast welcomes Relief Shop. Shop, Maryland's largest adult use and medical cannabis menu, located at 1114 Cathedral Street in Baltimore, with medical delivery available throughout Maryland seven days a week, only at Relief Shop. 
Hey, you work hard, I work hard, and we all like to save money. That's why we need the Royal Farms Rofo Rewards app to get more value for our hard-earned money. With the app, you earn royalty points on every purchase, can place mobile orders for quick pickup, plus a discount at the gas pump with Rofo Pay. We all like to save money, and with the Rofo Rewards app, we do. Real fresh, real fast, Royal Farms. Let's rejoin our conversation going on over in South Korea with Xavier Scruggs, only here on the Adam Jones Podcast. Who did you gravitate towards when you first got over here? Like, who were your teammates, the American teammates? I mean, I went to when I went to Japan, it was Tyler Higgins, uh, Stephen mm. Moya, Adeline Rodriguez, uh, Brandon Dixon. I didn't know any of them. Yeah. But boys <laughs> now, we over here on the island by ourselves, bro. We boys. Yeah, no, that's cool. I, I had a guy by the name of Eric Hacker who – had came into the KBO like five years earlier and he was familiar with the team and th that really eased my transition as well because he was obviously somebody who had been there for a long period of time. Um, I also came in, uh, you know, with, with a guy by the name of, um, by the name of Logan Verrett. He came in with me and, um, uh, yeah, Logan, yeah, Logan was uh, there with me as well. He was there my second year. So he was a guy that even though I had already had a year there, he made it comfortable for me as as he had a family too. He had his wife. He had his kid come over. Um, so we were re really related on a lot of things. Um, and so like when you have those guys, you know, it just makes it easier for you as a transition and you have someone to lean on, go to dinner with, and even guys on the other team. Um, all the foreigners or Americans on the other team was someone that were people that I leaned on as well. I'm going to take one step back. You were talking about you know, the acclimation of the of Korean, of Asian baseball, Korean baseball, Japan, I mean, yeah. Asian baseball in general, the drills. Were you able to physically keep up with it? I wasn't. I went over at 35. My body said no. Um, <laughs> were you able to? I, I tried as much as I could. Uh, how much were you able to keep up? Because again, they're running poles. I told the guy first day, no chance. Yeah. Just the first day. Like, come on. I'm not running poles, bro. Come on. Yeah. What were you I, able? How'd your body hold up? And what weren't you able to do? Yeah, the the running was was the first thing that I noticed was going to be out of hand. It was like, nah, we, we're not doing all that. That's way too much. And, and you do, like, try to give some effort, but you notice that they're taking it to a different level. So it's like you might as well not even do it at all because either, one, you're going to embarrass yourself, or, two, you're going to actually hurt yourself by doing too much, right, because your body. Um, so that was definitely one of the things. And other things like they, they just throw all day. Like if you, but they have 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just dedicated towards playing catch and, and playing long toss every day. And that was another thing is like catching the side of the end of the infield. So exactly. So the, the, just the, the arm stuff is just different. Um, you can kind of understand why those guys are able to throw a lot of innings, but at the same time, you start to see why maybe the velocity isn't the same just because they're always throwing and it's always something that they're doing. And same thing with the defensive players. Like they're always throwing, playing long toss. Um, so there's just certain regiments that e even the infield thing, just the, I feel like there's a lot of things that sometimes they'll do. And we call it eyewash here, like just doing it to do it right. And, and just doing it to just be a part of the team aspect of things. And that's what I started to notice. Like, I can't do all that because like you said, I was toward the end of my career and um, the body doesn't hold up the same way it does when you 19, 20 years old. You getting to see obviously playing both major league baseball and in Korean baseball. What can we learn from each other? Hmm. Yeah. Oh man. I think, I think one of the biggest things is just that perspective aspect of like, um, you know, it, when I, when I started playing in Korea, I think that's when I realized guys are coming from different areas, even in major league baseball, right? Dominican, Colombia, Mexico, um, wherever and Asia, it doesn't matter. But like when you're put in a, in a, in a situation in Korea, when you don't, know any of the language when you don't know any of what what you're seeing on if it's a restaurant or if it's a doctor's office you don't know any of those things to me that that put it into perspective that you should always try to help somebody else out you should always try to understand where somebody else is coming from build a relationship uh, do those things and i felt like that was a respect factor that 
Korea had, and I'm sure Japan is the same way, that those guys went out of their way to like make you feel comfortable. And I think that's part of what I would love to see more of in Major League Baseball, in in in, uh, in baseball in the U.S. in general. Um, and, and that's not, I'm not even talking about the baseball side of things. I'm just talking about the relational side of things. Like I would like to see that a little bit more. Um, you know, and I think from the baseball side of things, I posted something on Twitter the other day just talking about how in – in Korea, and I'm sure it's probably the same in Japan, they, during batting practice, some of the guys that are not hitting, they're actually hitting off to the side in, 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 uh, in the nets and like hitting off the tee on the field and like doing flips on the field. So one thing is they're always maximizing every single moment of, of opportunity while they're, while they're playing. I think that's one thing we could learn from as well. Talking about the major leagues, obviously, they're starting the season. This will be the ninth time that MLB has opened the season outside of the U.S. or Canada. How is the level of excitement in Korea right now with the Dodgers and Padres starting there? How are they adjusting to the difference in terms of culture and time difference and all that? We'll get into that with Adam a little later who had to make the journey. But I wanted to get your perspective because maybe some of these guys have leaned on you, Xavier, for where they need to go and what how they need to handle themselves <laughs> while they're in your country now. Yeah, well, first of all, the fan, the, the response is is lit. Um, like everybody is juiced uh, to have the Padres and Dodgers playing here. And, and then talking to some of the players, like those guys are all excited. Um, they have been excited about experiencing and going out and seeing different things. Uh, talk to Mookie Betts, and he's he's very adamant about spending his time doing uh, other things besides, you know, just worried about playing. But once it comes to those games, of course, th that's the priority. But, like, guys are diving into the culture and, and figuring out what's so special about Korea. And I think that's one thing that's really stuck out to me. Um, and, and I think people, fans are excited about the fact that, and players, are that these two games count. In, in Korea like it's not like these are two exhibition games that that just are going to go by the wayside like no these are two important games with two important teams that are vying for big opportunities in the postseason um, so I think that breeds an extra excitement for the players and the fans alike working with MLB ASBN you get to see um, you get to see a lot of sports you get to see the global aspect of all sports how it works how awesome is it to see baseball had the expansion of it over the last five six years obviously Otani has driven that massively especially this offseason by him going to the Dodgers the best market for him but how has baseball just in your eyes just the growth internationally now we have the Mexico series the London series they went to Dominican Republic a few weeks back so yeah. how awesome is it just how how amazing this game is that it's so global now yeah, I think a lot of times we forget how much the game um, grows market-wise in some of these other areas, right? And how big it is in some of these other areas. And I think I didn't realize that till I got to Korea and saw, saw how much Major League Baseball was being televised and saw how much people were keeping up with Major League Baseball. Um, and, and now seeing it go to these different places and you see the fan response, uh, it just is special seeing – everybody's so excited the atmospheres are are energetic like you're you're not getting those dull moments and i think that's what baseball is all about is like being able to go to these different backgrounds being able to go to these different countries and see how baseball is experienced in, in those different places and i think to me that just grows the game right that just gives us an opportunity to continue expanding and uh, i'm grateful that major league baseball is doing a lot of those things as far as the demand to get into this game, or is there ticket scalping going on over in Korea? What's that like? Oh yeah, there's black market. There's ticket scalping. <laughs> it's, it's worldwide. It's, it's that, yeah, it, it, that's that's why. And I think, and it's funny because I was talking to some of the Korean friends that I have here, and they were mentioning that it was really hard for Koreans to get a lot of tickets just because J the Japanese are coming over and they're getting a lot of the tickets. So like everybody's fighting for these tickets, um, especially to be able to see Ha Sung Kim, who uh, is obviously from here. Uh, you have uh, Go, who's a, another, who's a closer, another reliever that that's from here. And then obviously Shohei Otani is going to be the main factor. So a lot of players for Asian descent are, are playing in these games. And that just adds that much more to people wanting the tickets. 
Well, Adam's got the tickets for everyone. That's who you need to call. Call Adam Jones. <laughs> He's going to be in the game, too. He's going to be at the game. All right, I want to highlight two things before before we let you go. Yeah. You've been great. First off, in, since in 2021, you got hired by the Cardinals for diversity, inclusion, and equity. Yeah. Explain that to people who don't know. What well, Obviously, we know what the – EI, I mean, we know the acronyms, but explain that to people who don't know what that means in Major League Baseball standards. We can understand what it means working at Sitco. Right, what does it mean right. working at Major League Baseball? Yeah, one of the coolest opportunities that I've ever had with the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, it, it was an opportunity, and I, I got to give you a little back back info is in 2020 when I was seeing a lot of stuff going on with the, with the United States and you know um, uh, whether it be COVID whether it be you know Black Lives Matter whether it be um, racial injustice issues I wanted to learn more about it so I went and, and took classes and learned more about di diversity uh, equity and inclusion um, and then I went to the Cardinals and said, hey, is there a program in which guys are able to learn about certain things that are going on, whether it be in the community, whether it be what's going on in their organization specifically, whether it be uh, where the minor league players are going to play so they have information to learn about the place that they're going to when it comes to a lot of these things that are happening in our world. Um, and they didn't have a program like that. They didn't have information like that. And ultimately, it was a program to help players understand how their voice is being heard, but also how they're in, how they can best put themselves in positions to succeed. Um, what can they do as far as uh, learning about their situations? What can they do about learning about different ethnicities and different backgrounds that can give them more information? Um, that was something that I was able to provide a lot of players, coaches, and staff members, and. Um, and what it really looked like was me being able to give them content via via podcast, via via uh, um, uh, it could be reading material, it could be a, any type of material that helped them. It could be pictures, video, any material that helped them in a sense um, learn about what's going on in our world um, and how to put themselves in a great position to succeed. So that that was kind of what I was able to do for the Cardinals organization and and something that I took a lot of pride in. And um, it was it was an amazing opportunity and a great role. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah, I know Ricky Weeks got the job with with the uh, the Brewers with that in that situation. Like, just what what we can do, man, in our communities, it's crazy. But I ain't gonna let you get out of here without talking about my O's. Okay, <laughs> all right, not gonna let you. And they came; they're third in the power rankings to start the year. Like, this is the first time in a long time they're just <laughs> riding high right now, and they are good. Uh, some tough decisions ahead of them. Uh, obviously, working in the media side, what's your assessment of of them and how they're, you know, the projections of their season? Man, it's about the first time we should really be taking them seriously since you play for the O's. If I'm if I'm being quite honest, like this is a team that you win a, a, over a hundred games last year, and then you go add a Cy Young winner. Um, I don't know why people. Uh, should not take this team seriously as far as going and representing the American League in, in the World Series. Um, I look at the the young talent that they have uh, mixed with a lot of the veteran leadership, uh, but but star players too, like young star players in Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rushman. Um, when I look at Jackson Holiday and the way he can impact this team, but, but how much depth this team has. Like you don't often get that from the position player side. Um and then also from the pitching side as well, young guys that will get better, Grayson Rodriguez. And the, the one the one area I'm a little concerned is maybe the bullpen. Uh, but, I mean, at that point, we're nitpicking because you're still bringing over a guy in Craig Kimbrell who's been there, done it, seen everything. Um, and, and Yanir Cano was absolutely filthy last year. So it, it'll be fun watching this team. They'll have a tough division to compete with, but they look to me to be the favorite to definitely win the AL East. There's excitement in Korea. There's excitement in Baltimore. Xavier Scruggs, <laughs> we can't thank you for your time. Straight out of not North Korea, South Korea. Let's point that out. You're in the safer <laughs> part of the world. All right, let's transition to our For the Birds segment presented by the Maryland Lottery. Hey, when you play the Maryland Lottery, folks, set limits. Never play when you're stressed and know your odds of winning. To learn more, just simply visit mdlottery.com play slash play responsibly. Again, that's mdlottery.com slash play responsibly must be 18 years or older to play. So the Ravens adding Derrick Henry this past week. And three questions in, I asked them, 
what was on everyone's mind. Anyway. How much do you feel uh, you have left in the tank? Or something you feel like, you know, your best days are behind you. What, what's your response to, to that? <laughs> Tell them to keep watching. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> they said the same uh, thing about you, Jerry. <laughs> 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 look at you, you're still here, so. <laughs> it's kind of unnecessary by Mr. EDC, Eric DaCosta, but that'll make him have to come on the podcast after the draft. Uh, oh, I didn't awesome. think that was a tough question to ask. I was just finding out what he had left in the tank. He's 30 years old. Right. That's when running True. backs supposedly reached their prime, AJ. True. Yeah. It, I mean, that is a, it, it is a fair question, but the man had 1,300 yards last year. He didn't have 850. He had 1,300. That would have led the Ravens. That would have led a lot of teams. Again, age, you know, it's just it's part, it's part of it. Um, but I think he's going to be special. But you know what? Who I want to give out a, a shout out to about this also is Jimmy Sifu because obviously they tweeted at him and said, okay, we'll give you lifetime uh, food. And they've done that for many Steam people. Steam crabs, uh, the, Anything. the crab pretzel, the egg roll that you everything. love, uh, crab Dude, cakes. Every, it's, it's everything. And I want to just give them love because obviously whenever I reached out to them, they've sent me crab cakes. They've sent me whatever. But for Christmas this year, I forgot to even mention this. For Christmas this year, they took care of my father-in-law and the, and the whole family that stayed in Maryland. And I don't know what the bill was, but they said it's on the house. And like, what? Salute. Yeah, I mean, that was it was unbelievable what they did. And uh, thank and, you to you know, Johnny Crack Gates and Big Mike. Everything. Big Mike is, is great. Everybody's just great. John is great. And, you know, I just had to tip my cap to him because they really, really have came through for us. And, you know, they continue to come through for Baltimore. Obviously, they're doing great things with the tailgoat. And, you know, obviously, Henry is going to cash in on this. And he, I was going to say, he'd be, like he, like he he'd be a fool. He'd be a fool not like to take him up on that offer, fool. right? Well, right. I mean, we know free is Jerry. Yeah, Derek can afford I'm it. Waiting for that invite. Still free. Still free. Yeah, we can yeah. still go with the free. Yeah, he joins a, a a bunch of luminaries who've done that before, from Michael Crabtree, Steve Smith Sr., uh, Jeremy Macklin. So they've done it before. And any time. Here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. But here's the thing about that. Here's the thing about that. By them saying that and just like throwing it out there in the world, obviously we know that. How often do, does a player cash in? Like, I'm, if I'm in California, I maybe call them twice in off season or something like that. Uh, it's always driven, but it's like how often? It, it's a great gesture, but like how often is someone who's like, you know, if they live in another state, it's like, hey, can you send me something? Or you know, I mean, that, I always wonder that because well, they, that's why we're gonna have to have maybe we get someone on from Jimmy's, either Big Mike or Johnny yeah. Crab Cakes, and ask him who's who's taking you up severely on that offer where they're eating there every other day. Right, you. Yeah, that would be. But amazing. no, but I want to say, just talk about though the impact of Derrick Henry. I mean, like, dude is a probably set himself up to be a Hall of Famer. Uh, he is one of the best third down backs in the league. He's incredibly hard to tackle. Um, you have that. You, I mean, you got two forces now in the backfield again. Gus Edwards and and all the other guys were great. You know what I mean? It's a little different. <laughs> it's just a little different over here. And, you know, again, like he said, he got a lot left in the tank. And hopefully he can prove uh, prove everybody wrong and prove DaCosta right. And prove yeah. and, you know, and bring again, like, you know, what happens in Baltimore? We know what it is. We need playoff wins. We need Super Bowl. A regular season, that's great. The, the, the expectations for the Ravens are very high. Um, and, and rightfully so. They should be because it's a great franchise. So it's going to be it's going to be really exciting to see uh, him wear that uniform and see what they can do but it's a long time from now yeah and i'll end so it on stay this. healthy and do all that i'll end it on this my expectation is they would give him more than six carries in the afc championship <laughs> were they to reach that so i'll just leave it at that yeah that was a bailed cheap shot at da costa and harbaugh let's move on let's keep it moving to our baltimore and beyond segment this is our national segment sometimes international like this week and it's brought to you by our friends at Relief Medical Marijuana Dispensary, where they go above and beyond to help the patients. And Adam, let's talk about your journey to Korea, getting there. There was a pit stop yeah. beforehand. So yeah. take us through that. Hopefully you didn't get egged in the airport like uh, Dave Roberts. I saw an egg go by his head as he entered the airport in Korea. I don't know if you saw that video, but uh, what was it like getting yeah, over there from Barcelona? Well, first off, the word's a three-letter word, far. Let's just start with that. Uh, no, Korea is Asia in general is very far, and depending on where you want to go, you you know you go down to Vietnam and all the southern part, Singapore is even further. No, but we uh, was obviously living in Barcelona. We started and we went to Dubai. Um, 
So kids wanted to go to a water park. My youngest son turned eight and we were like, you know, this is your present. We're, it's perfect. The perfect timing. It was a perfect layover, 18 hour layover in Dubai. So we got a room at the, the, the Atlantis, something really, really nice and at crazy water park. So me and my boys, hey, we went on all the slides, all the rides. Um, and it was just a blast. I had one kid, my wife had the other, and we just were just having a blast, man. And it was such a great time. And then fly over to Korea. The crazy thing, though, is that in this part of the world, flights are just weird. So we had a nine o'clock flight out of Barcelona. OK, we land at five, six o'clock in the morning, Dubai. We have a 3.30 a.m. flight out of Dubai to come to South Korea. So we land in South Korea at 4.30, wondering, like, why can't you just leave at 10 and land at 11? But, you know, hey, I'm not a pilot uh, or anything, so I'm not in the aeronautics world. But we got to South Korea and it's been nonstop. Obviously, it's such a big, big city um, with obviously Major League Baseball is here right now. You have the you have the teams. The Korean teams are back in the cities playing their exhibition games before their season starts. We got to can't forget their season starts very shortly. Same as ours. And. You know, we did cooking classes. We learned how to make bibimbap. That is a very, very good dish with rice, beef, pork, if you want it, and different vegetables, a fried egg, however you want that. I do mine over over medium. Now, I, did, I do that sunny side up, actually, because I like the yolk and the running. Um, but it's just been nonstop and just seeing so many great aspects and uh, temples, castles, dressing up in the in the customary clothing. Like, you know, you, you know us, We got, my wife is going to make sure that our itinerary is full. And, you know, but having two days before the, the game started, it was able to get we were able to get acclimated here. And then obviously with the games, you know, we just enjoy the enjoy the day and then enjoy the baseball games because the crowds are electric. They don't stop. Now, I know Xavier was talking about that and they don't stop. OK, like they be down by they be down nine nothing. They won't stop. And it's remarkable. It can be annoying, but it's it's, it's <laughs> the spirit. And when you're playing international ball, you just have to conform to the culture. And it's, we've talked about it numerous times that I've conformed to the Japanese culture tremendously because why not? I'm there for two years. What what's the worst that can happen? I like it, and you know it opened the doors for moving and living all over all over the world. So, um, it, you know it's 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 great to travel. It's great to see the other side of the world. Um, next week I'll be doing a podcast from Vietnam. So Ooh. we're going to see how that internet works. Yeah. We're going to be, I don't know where we're going to Vietnam, but somewhere in Vietnam, it's going to be nice. So, oh, again, hopefully I got an ethernet cord to plug up or, or something, but no, it's, it's, it's great to travel and again. It's great to see the growth of baseball right now. And obviously with Otani Yamamoto being you know, headliners, but Kim being the, you know, the hometown host, it's just it's been great seeing seeing the growth of, of the game of baseball that we all love. What about the adjustment you have to make? Because you're constantly doing it. I don't know how you can with the time changes. You're 13 hours ahead Eastern Standard Time right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's you don't yeah, sleep. You sleep I know die. that you, you sleep when you die. You know, what I mean, I heard that a long time ago. You sleep when you die. But at the same time, it's not too late. You know, I'm in a new city all the time, so it's exciting. You know what I mean? It's like I don't want to see the bright lights. I don't want to go to bed. I'd rather stay up and do something and go somewhere and see something and, you know, do do cool things like that. So, you know, the time really doesn't get me. When I get back to Barcelona, I'm a couch potato for three days. I'm done. I'm spent. I'm just like, tired. Last week we did the pod. I was I was exhausted because the travel, staying in one time zone for a while is 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 difficult. And I was in Florida for two weeks. And then come back to Barcelona, just just spin. Obviously, you know, working with the O's and stuff. So it, it's again, it's it's all worth it. But that's what you do. You go on vacation, you have a good time, you go home, and you just crash. I asked Xavier about North Korea. That's not on the agenda, even a day trip, right? <laughs> I mean, I your wife's um, a travel agent. No, so there was a big group going to the DMZ. Um, we okay. just had different plans. Yeah, there were big groups going to the DMZ. We just had different plans. Plans. My uh, one of my aunt and uncles, they're out here with. Uh, they work. They work with Dave Winfield very closely, and they went to the DMZ, took great pictures. So I felt like I was there. And other being there, like their post is cold. It's windy. Hey, it's cold out here right now. It's like it's thirty degrees. You know, what I mean? like and windy. Well, I want to do all that, and I can see all of it through the pictures. So we just did cooking classes and things like that, walking around markets. Mm -hmm. 
and seeing just the locals. That's what we like to do. I like to be very, very local. Just trying to keep up with the Joneses. It's very tough, folks. Very tough. Very. All right. Are you ready for a chance at free food? We just talked about it earlier with Jimmy's famous seafood, but this is from Lido's Pizza. They are the new sponsor of Socially Speaking, and this is where we answer a tweet or social media pass, and now a chance to win a $50 gift card from our friends at Lido Pizza, the proud partner, Lido Pizza of the Baltimore Orioles. And again, you can find us on social media at Adam Jones Pod on every platform, or just email us if your social media challenge, the Adam Jones Pod at gmail.com. You can see it on the screen on YouTube. Now, last week you asked Adam about the Orioles farm system and if there's a concern about the stats carrying over from spring training to the regular season, like if a player hits a slump in spring training, is that a real concern once they head north? Sean on the X wrote in at Sean underscore prod. Thoughts on pitcher hitter results in spring training. Burns, Kimbrel numbers haven't been great. Kowser, Holiday and company are mashing. Neither thoughts. One carryover. Uh, it's kind of a disjointed tweet, but O's fans would want to ignore uh, the pitcher numbers as just spring training, but ignore the fact that the hitter numbers are also there. Are the hitters ahead of the pitchers at this juncture right now? No, as we're in no, 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 Almost, what, no, no. Four weeks in, pitchers are never hitters are never hitters are never ahead of the pitchers. No, never. Um, they get there first. They are they they set the tone. But you know, here's the thing with spring training. It's two two ways to look at it. It's you know Corbin Burns. He's named the opening day starter. He can throw up a nine. Shut up. Uh, Craig Kimbrell, 400 plus saves. He's going to be on the team. Um, so the guys like that, I just worry about getting through spring training healthy. They're working on things, they had new environment. Um, they're young again, building them straight, they're building them, themselves back up. Um, you know, they only got so many bullets, especially Kimbrell. There's only so many bullets left in that, in that chamber. And, you know, it's, he's preserving them as he should. Um, but then you got the, the other side of it is the young guys, you know, you got Kowser who's fighting for that fourth outfield, outfield uh, job. I love Kowser. Oh, man. He's so talented. He's There's big, a battle. Too, big There's a battle. Yeah, it's a, it's a, him, Stowers, Kirstad. Like, it, it is amazing. That's why we asked Mullins, like, what keeps you, like, keep you grinding? And it's these guys be on his ass. So um, the talent is real. I mean, and then you got Jackson Holiday obviously pushing every right button. And it's going to be tough decisions. You know, Xavier was hitting harping on that too. Is they got some well, tough decisions. They got Heider, a week, one week they, from opening. They got game. a week. Hyder and Hyder and, and 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 Elias. They have a very very tough job, but this is the job you want. You don't want you don't want these decisions to be easy. Like oh yeah, yeah I got I know my twenty five. You want it to come down to these fighting. And again, like I said, the beautiful part about the, this is that everybody is pushing each other. When I was there, Stowers, Kerstad, um, Kowser, Hayes, they all push each other. Santander, Mullins, O'Hearns in the outfield. He because you know, that's obviously more flexibility. They are all pushing each other. Like they uh, genuinely want to see each other succeed. They want to see each other go yard. Like it's amazing to see. What, and I can only speak of the outfielders because that's what I was around. Obviously, I've seen the infielders, but it's the genuineness that of success that they really want for their teammate. I love it. Well, I can't wait for opening day. I know you can't either. And when we talk next week, when you're in Vietnam, the season will be underway. Looking forward to that. We also want to thank our sponsors. Go out and support the following folks as they support the Adam Jones Podcast. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by our friends at the Weinman Company. Your fun awaits at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Feed the whole crew with something for everyone from cheesesteaks to crab cake sandwiches. Plus, ask how you can get a $15 dining credit. Get in on the gaming action with the hottest slots and your favorite table games like blackjack, roulette, and poker. Free live shows every Friday and Saturday. Come experience nonstop fun and excitement only at Hollywood Casino Perryville. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by Jimmy's Famous Seafood, Charm City's favorite crab cake destination. Local sports fan? Experience the ultimate pregame party at the tailgate. Cheer on the Ravens with iconic live performances, an open bar, and mouth-watering eats. Can't make it? No worries. Bring the same food that caught the attention of the Food Network right to your doorstep. Shipping East Coast recipes nationwide. Jimmy's Famous Seafood is the official sponsor of the guests appearing on the Adam Jones Podcast. Come and get your fun. Come and get your fun. Play 
the Maryland Lottery. Call me, get your fun. Because fun looks good on you. Right now, play our exciting new multiplier scratch-offs for a chance to win up to $2 million. Call me, get your fun. If you received ERC funds, listen closely. The IRS has 10 years to audit your claim, but you only have until March 22nd to get taxpayer relief, and the clock is ticking. If you're losing sleep over a possible audit, we'll review your claim. If you made a filing error, we'll set things right. If you're being audited, we'll provide expert representation. The IRS Voluntary Disclosure Program ends March 22nd. You deserve peace of mind. Visit SaveMyERC.com to schedule a consultation today. That's SaveMyERC.com. Effective Solutions, your one-stop shop for commercial contracting. Everything from excavation and site development to emergency remediation and restoration. Effective Solutions specializes in many forms of commercial and mixed-use construction. With a dedicated staff and a commitment to quality, Effective Solutions delivers every time. There are a lot of ways to make whiskey, but there's only one way to make Jack Daniels. At Jack Daniels, they charcoal mellow every drop, only using water from Cave Spring Hollow in Tennessee. When you make your own label, you make everything else yours too. But we don't need to tell you that. Do we? Make it count. Jack Daniels. Please drink responsibly. Tennessee whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniel Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks 2022. Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. Everyone knows Green Mount Station in Hampstead, but did you know that at Green Mount Station, you can bet seven days a week just like you're at the track? With in-person teller windows and state-of-the-art touchscreen kiosks. And with Green Mount Station's brand new Bet Park Sports Book, you can bet on all other sports as well, wherever you are in Maryland. Spreads, money lines, live bets, props, parlays, and teasers. The Bet Park Parks Maryland mobile app is now live for Apple and Android devices, so you'll never miss your next big score. Just search for Bet Parks MD in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for a limited time, 21 and over Adam Jones podcast listeners can get a $75 gift card to Greenmount Station simply for opening a new account with promo code GMS and a minimum $50 initial deposit. $75 gift card for new users in Maryland only. 21 and over only. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. The Adam Jones Podcast welcomes Relief Shop. Shop Maryland's largest adult use and medical cannabis menu located at 1114 Cathedral Street in Baltimore with medical delivery available throughout Maryland seven days a week only at Relief Shop. Hey, you work hard, I work hard, and we all like to save money. That's why we need the Royal Farms Rofo Rewards app to get more value for our hard-earned money. With the app, you earn royalty points on every purchase, can place mobile orders for quick pickup, plus a discount at the gas pump with Rofo Pay. We all like to save money, and with the Rofo Rewards app, we do. Real fresh, real fast, Royal Farms. Thanks to senior executive producer Chip Franklin for putting this episode together. Chip is not chocolate chip or mid chip. He's just chip, and guess what? That's good enough for us. Chip, I'm going to come at you like a spider monkey. Until next time, be real, be kind, and make sure to be back next week from Vietnam to Sarasota to Baltimore for another edition of the Adam Jones Podcast. 